years ago, Washington's Jake Browning hung eight touchdowns on Autzen Stadium en route to the college football playoff. On that day, Oregon's Justin Herbert was a freshman, making his first career start. Today, the junior is the top NFL quarterback prospect in the country. It's the Huskies and the Ducks right now. You're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN from sold out Autzen Stadium on a glorious mid-October afternoon in Eugene. It's a very important matchup in the Pac-12 North, number seven, Washington, and number 17, Oregon. A couple of one-loss teams with a lot at stake here today. Hi, everybody. Welcome Sean McDonald along with Todd Blackledge. We'll be joined in a moment by Holly Rowe. Big conference game, probably an elimination game with an eye toward the college football playoff for the loser of this game. A lot of talent on both sides. High-level game today. Two of the best quarterbacks in the country. Absolutely. Let's start with the hometown guy. Justin Herbert is a very athletic six foot six, 235-pound guy. Can beat you with his arm and his feet, but his arm is an NFL arm. And speaking of the NFL, he is kind of shot to the top of all the draft boards as the number one prospect on the other side Jake Browning's a senior who is starting his 45th game today. He's a guy that at a school with a great history of quarterbacks has thrown for more yards and more touchdowns than any of them. He thinks like a coach. He's seen everything you can see as a quarterback. It's Washington and Oregon. The rivalry dates back to 1900. Sun has come out after a cloudy morning. It is a beautiful day. The temperature expected to be into the mid 70s. Ducks about to make their way out onto this field and into one of the loudest venues in all of college football. They call it Husky Hate Week here in Eugene, Oregon. A lot of emotion on both sides. 111th meeting back to 1900. Washington has the all-time lead, including victories each of the last two seasons. Last time they were here, they blew out the Oregon Ducks. Browning threw six touchdown passes and ran for two. And last year, Washington won at home 38-3. to Oregon had won the previous 12. Down on the field, here's Holly Rowe. Well, you talked earlier about Justin Herbert for Oregon at quarterback. His first career start was against Washington, and it didn't go well. The Huskies hung 70 points on Oregon, so he didn't play last year due to injury. He gets an opportunity today, and it's very cool. He grew up just two miles away. He spent much of his life sitting in Section 12 watching these Oregon Ducks, and now he's the leader. He told me earlier this year that he thinks that he's doing well at quarterback because he played all three varsity sports growing up. In fact, he didn't enroll early because he was too busy wrapping up a state championship in baseball as the pitcher for Sheldon High School. This is your All-American kid. He doesn't have social media. He doesn't have Instagram. He doesn't have a private quarterback coach. He's just here, a local kid, making good, leading the Oregon Ducks. Very soft-spoken. His offensive coordinator, Marcus Arroyo, we visited yesterday, said he is truly an introvert. It yeah. was hard for us to hear him speak in our production yeah. meeting yesterday, but uh, he's taken on the leadership role as one of the best quarterbacks, maybe the best quarterback in yeah. the country right now. Big day for him, for his team, led by Mario Cristobal, was the offensive coordinator and line coach last year under Willie Taggart, who was here for just one year as the head coach. He left to go to Florida State, so Cristobal was promoted. Tireless worker, great recruiter, and you feel like the thing has already started to change back to where Oregon was in the heydays of Chip Kelly in the beginning years of yeah. Mark Helfrich. It's a little different, though, because they're more physical up front, and they've got to be to play with teams like Washington. Chris Peterson has done a marvelous job in his rebuild at Washington, and they start at the line of scrimmage, a very physical football team, and that will be the challenge for Oregon today. He has seen this heated rivalry from both sides. Chris Peterson was an assistant here at Oregon for six seasons under Mike Bellotti back in the late 90s. Oregon won the toss and deferred, so the Ducks will kick off. Not much of a breeze. What little breeze there is is at the back of the Oregon Ducks. Zach Emerson will kick off. After a cloudy morning, a beautiful sunshiny day, still cool with a temperature in the high 50s, but heading for the 70s. 
Tumbling kickoff down to McGrew, who takes a knee. Well, here come the Huskies, led for the fourth year in a row by Jake Browning. First four-year starter in the modern era, that quarterback for the Huskies of the University of Washington, 34 and 10 in his career as a starter. And we mentioned the huge game he had here two years ago. We showed you some moments from the rivalry as we came back out of the commercial. It's become known as the point. When he scored his first touchdown, he pointed at Jimmy Swain, an Oregon defender. That did not sit well with the Ducks, and they're still a little salty about it two years later. They give it to Miles Gaskin, the all-time leading rusher in Washington history, and he got four taken down by Lamar Winston, an outside linebacker. That's the bread and butter play for this Washington offense, the outside zone or stretch play. And they'll run a lot of play action pass off of that. Gaskin's not an overpowering back, but he's a guy who gets stronger the longer the game goes. He's now rushed for 4,613 career yards. Earlier this year, passed Napoleon Kaufman to become the all time leading rusher in Husky history. And off the play fake, they're a big play action team. Browning under duress throws an interception. The Amador Lenore with the ninth interception of the year to lead the Pac-12 for Oregon. It's play action and it's only a two-man route with an outlet route. So Jake Browning, when he comes out of the fake, has nowhere to go with the football. Pressure by Jelks, number 97, made him uncomfortable. And when he threw it, he did not pick up Lenore in the back. There's the hit at the end of the play. There was not great initial pressure, but the coverage downfield against that play action was excellent by the Oregon defense. So well, they start on offense from the Washington 37 out of the pistol and lots of running room. C.J. Verdell, a freshman, got nine on his first carry. Back to the pistol they go. And with pressure coming, Herbert just throws it at the feet of his intended receiver. Levi Onzerike had the pressure sophomore out of Allen, Texas. Yeah, Onzerike had the pressure in great games. The nose guard had the screen diagnosed. That's why he threw the ball in the dirt. Both of these teams love to run screens, and Washington had that one. They were ready for that one. So it's third down and six. These are two of the best third down offenses in the country. Oregon is eighth, 51%. Washington's just a little bit better than that. They're sixth in the country. Herbert with time, throwing for the corner of the end zone. And incomplete over the head of Dylan Mitchell, their leading receiver for the year. Well, he loves looking at Mitchell, but I think he got locked in on him. If he picks up his tight end, the big tight end, Coming across the middle is wide open. He's going to look for Mitchell in the end zone, but watch the tight end on third and short. That's an easy first down if he goes there. There's Adam Stack. They've only tried three field goals all year. He's tried two of them. He's one for two. As a team, they're one for three. High snap, and the kick is good from 39 yards officially for Stack, who's been battling a hip problem. 3-0 Oregon just underway. Spectacular day here in Central Oregon. The homestanding Ducks leading 3-0. Turned an interception of Jake Browning into a field goal. Sean McGrew back deep again for a Zach Emerson kickoff. First one was a touchback to start the game. This one's returnable from about a yard deep. McGrew, former California High School Player of the Year, upended shy of the 20-yard line. Excellent coverage by Brendan Schooler. So here comes Jake Browning, four-year starter. He was the first true freshman quarterback in the history of the University of Oregon to start a season opener. 2016, his best year, the conference player of the year, led them to the conference title in the college football playoff semifinal a year ago.
10 wins, even though his numbers were down. They lost to Penn State in the Fiesta Bowl. At a school that has produced really as many great yeah. quarterbacks as any, he's the all-time leader in passing yardage. Coming up on 11,000 career passing yards. Very accurate as well, nearly 65% for his career. Running for his life, now throws on the run, and it's wow. caught. For a first down to the 39, the tight end, Cade Otten, who's come on in recent weeks. As a quarterback, you have to be able to let go of a bad play and move to the next play. Very next play after the interception, buys time, keeps his eyes downfield, and makes a big-time completion. Short Sometimes time. he can try to do a little too yeah. much. He felt like, and the coaches agreed that last year, off the big year in 16, he thought he had to do more. And the coaches said, no, you don't have to make bigger and better plays. Just keep doing what you're doing and get better within the scope of the offense. Miles Gaskin to the 42, a gain of four. Yeah, Sean, I think sometimes when a quarterback hears himself labeled as a great game manager, he, he takes offense to that, thinks he has to do more than that. There's nothing wrong with being a great ma game manager, and he is, but he's also capable of making big plays when he throws on time and in rhythm. He doesn't have the power arm like Herbert and several others at the top level of college football. Miles Gaskin runs for a first down just across midfield, chased out by... The safety, Nick Pickett, and Bush Hamden, the offensive coordinator in Washington, who spent last year in the NFL with the Atlanta Falcons as the quarterback coach. And I have no doubt that Browning is going to be an NFL quarterback. He said the power arm thing is overrated. He said, I'll take the intelligence and the toughness and a lot of the other attributes that Browning has. Play fake. You see a lot of play action today. Browning checks it down in an incomplete pass. Big hit along the far sideline to break it up. Alana Pello, the linebacker, knocked the ball free. So far, on both of the play action passes, Oregon's defense under Jim Levitt is very well prepared. They know that when they go play action, they're only sending two guys deep down the field. That time there were four Oregon defenders against two receivers. That's why Browning had to look for an outlet underneath. Levin, of course, the longtime head coach of the University of South Florida. They crowd the line of scrimmage, and it's a quick slant by Browning to Ty Jones for a first down. They had the right response to the pressure from Oregon. Yeah, that was an RPO. So the offensive line is blocking run. That holds the linebackers and opens up that throwing lane to the biggest receiver on this Washington squad, Ty Jones at 6'4", 209 pounds. They're at the Oregon 36. The Ducks leading three to nothing. Gaskin sliced down to the 18-yard line. Apello another tackle for Oregon. This is going to be the real challenge for Oregon's defense because this is a physical Washington football team. They're physical up front, and they're going to run right at this Oregon defense. The Oregon defense is long and athletic, but they're not an overpowering group. But they really have to have a gut check here against this Washington run game. Sean McGrew, part of that deep running back group, was in the game. A pass to the back of the end zone. And a diving attempt made by Ty Jones. That's a matchup they want. Jones against some of the smaller defensive backs of Oregon. Well, Amadi is a safety with coverage skills, and he's actually had an outstanding year. Three interceptions on the season, that time in perfect position. Washington trying to go with the big receiver, throwing it up in the air, but Amadi in excellent position to cover. He's had a great year, but Bush Hamden said yesterday, we want to see if we can create that matchup. Jones against Amadi. If Amadi gives away about six inches in that one. Oregon struggled against some of those tall Stanford receivers. Jones out wide to the bottom of the screen, their big receiver. And Oregon blitz. Browning belted as he threw it, and it's incomplete. Not on the same page with the receiver as Justin Hollins delivered the hit. And the only man back there was Thomas Graham. There was no receiver in sight for Washington. Jake Browning is going deep. 
Little shot at the end of that play from Justin Hollins. A miscommunication. They were going for the big receiver against the smaller corner. Just a misfire communication-wise between quarterback and receiver. There's Peyton Henry, redshirt freshman. to be his longest field goal of his career. And it is good. A 41-yarder. Previous long was 31 way back in the opener against Auburn. So each team with a field goal nearly seven minutes in. Peyton Henry kicks off. On a bounce taken by Tony Brooks James. Bounces off a hit. Flags down. The ball's out. It looked like he might have been on the ground before he fumbled. They did drop the beanbag, though, so we'll see. They're ruling it a fumble, but I'm sure they'll take a look at it, whether his knee was down. It'll be first down, Washington. So it's Washington ball at the 41. Again, your big receiver, Jones, is at the bottom of the screen. This is him right here, six foot four. The corners for Oregon are not overly big guys. Browning under center. Miles Gaston is the tailback. Running left. Didn't have anything there. Tried to cut it back. No game. Jordan Scott, the man in the middle of that defensive front, denied the advance by Gaskin. Really a good football player. I mean, he is a, a just a fire hydrant in there. At <laughs> six, he's listed at 6'1". He's probably closer to 5'11". About 330 pounds. He just absorbs double teams, holds both A-gaps, and that time when Gaskin tried to cut back, he was waiting for him. Another of the similarities, very good offensive lines on each side. Browning trying to set up a screen, got it off, and it's dropped. Gaskin could not hang on. Todd, you wonder if the shadow's a problem here. We talk about baseball and some of the fields in the yeah. sunlight. Some is in the shadows. I know it's a little tough for us from up here yeah. to identify people as they run into the shadows. I think the reason or the fact that Browning had to loft that ball because it was pretty well defended on the screen. The ball hung in the air a long time, and Gaskin just kind of lost concentration on it. Oregon bringing regular pressure at Browning. They like to blitz. They're the number one sack team in the conference with 16 coming in. Browning got it off and a lot of room on the far sideline. Out of bounds at the 30, where the first down goes Drew Sample, yeah. the tight end. Good read by Jake Browning. Sample got out there. They expected him to block because Oregon didn't jump on him early. And it was a quick throw out of the hands of Jake Browning for the first down. I like these tight ends for Washington. They play with two tight ends almost all the time. Number 87, Cade Otten, really coming into his own. A very physical point of attack blocker for this team. And Sample, another steady player for them. Gaskin, tough run inside the 25. Washington playing without two would-be standouts on their offense. They lost Trey Adams, their terrific left tackle before the year started, just days before the Auburn game with back surgery. And then Hunter Bryant, a sophomore tight end, Bush Hamden said a tight end in our offense who can stretch the field deep down the middle is a dream. They lost him to a knee injury, but they think they're going to get him back before the end of the year. Second and five, some trickery and some running room. Savan Ahmed inside the five and into the end zone for a Washington touchdown. Yeah, the muddle huddle really caught Oregon off guard. They were not set. Washington broke out of the huddle quick, snapped it quick, and Oregon was all discombobulated on defense. Ahmed able to turn that end around into a touchdown. His excellent speed. Question is, was he in bounds all the way? Yes, yeah, he was. Absolutely. A touchdown for Ahmed. And when you play against a Chris Peterson team, you think back to his days at Boise yeah. State and the 
Trick plays in the big Fiesta Bowl win over Oklahoma. You need to be ready for just about Absolutely. Everything. And that was the quick snap out of the fast huddle, more so than a trick play, but it sure fooled the Oregon defense. Third of his sophomore season for Ahmed. Bush Hamden, the offensive coordinator, calls him a home run threat. That was a big play there. Aiden Henry's kickoff down to Tony Brooks. James, after fumbling the last one, trying to atone. Wow. And he fights all the way down to the 41 yard line of Washington. Finally wrestled down by Keith Taylor. Nice job by Tony Brooks Jones. Short term memory loss. Forget that fumble and go right back at it again. Protect the football when you feel contact is coming. Both those kickoffs are low kickoffs. And Tony Brooks James with a nice job getting that ball out into Washington territory. Longest kickoff return of the season for Oregon. Justin Herbert. Out of the pistol. C.J. Verdell, nice hole. And he's ahead for six. Here's Second and four. Under five and a half to go first quarter. They like the pistol formation at Oregon. And so far, out of it, Herbert's been handing the ball off. That to C.J. Verdell. They brought Jim Mastro over from Nevada. He had been in Nevada for a long time with Chris Holt. They invented the pistol with Colin Kaepernick in mind. They wanted to use his running skills, but they still wanted the downhill power running game. Well, it does two things. Now, right now, the back is offset, but in the pistol, normally, you go downhill and you don't tip your run to the defense. I think Herbert has the kind of athleticism that Kaepernick has as a runner. He's an excellent thrower as well. Here's Dylan Mitchell inside the 20 and run out of bounds with a first down at the 12. Chased out by Miles Bryant, a pickup of 22. Now this could be offensive pass interference. I'm not sure what they're going to call. It's a, it's a double crossing route. You have two crossers from the right and Mitchell, the primary target coming from the left. And an accurate throw by Justin Herbert. Oh, Verdell almost broke it. You heard the crowd groan as he got tackled because if Taylor Rapp missed, yeah. that might have been a tie ball game. He doesn't miss. Taylor Rapp is going to play a lot of different places today. They use him all over the field. Jimmy Lake, the defensive coordinator, says he's the smartest guy that I've ever coached, and he's coached some good ones. But you'll see number seven line up in a lot of different places, sometimes as a safety, sometimes in coverage, sometimes like a linebacker up by the line of scrimmage. Wrap a first-team preseason All-American. Herbert throws it away. In the general direction of Dylan Mitchell, but probably closer to his parents. In the crowd here, the Herberts from about two miles from here. Young Justin used to walk to the games. That it was about a 10 or 12 minute walk. Maybe his brother was up there too. He's got a younger brother. He's a tight end at Shelton High School. Is committed to come to the University of Oregon. Not highly recruited by the Power Five schools. He was looking at Montana State, Nevada, among others, before his hometown. Ducks came in late with a scholarship offer. They emptied the backfield. They protect him well. He has his man, Dylan Mitchell. Nice move. Touchdown. Washington has excellent coverage on everybody except this guy, Mitchell, the number one target. You see how late the coverage is getting to him. By the time they get there, he's able to elude a couple defenders, Byron Murphy, number one, and get in the end zone. Third touchdown of the season for Mitchell, a junior from Memphis, Tennessee, and Adam Stack's extra point. Ties the game with a minute 52 to go in the first. Great start, what we anticipate when these two rivals get together. Head coaches that are former offensive linemen. 
And Impressive. he's trying to blend what Oregon's That's been right. in the past. The up-tempo, fast-paced Chip Kelly offense doesn't want them to lose that part of their recent successful yeah. past, but also get a little more physical well, on the offensive and defensive lines. Well, who, who have been the teams to beat in the conference in their side? Stanford and Washington. You want to beat those teams, you better be a physical football team. You're not going to just do it with flash and speed. And that's not to say, even though they play fast, the uh, Oregon teams of old weren't physical because they were among the leaders, if not the leading rushing team many years under Chip Kelly in the Pac-12. Sean McGrew brought the kickoff back to the 24. Jake Browning throws on first down incomplete. Did you get all that? I feel like I did a really horrible job there promoting ESPN Plus. I was just looking at the pictures. I, I, and that's going to be very interesting. Why wouldn't you get it? Because that 30 for 30, they're all awesome. Yeah. I didn't rescue it, but I tried to play heck there at the very end. Second and 10. Browning just three out of nine passing. Been really impressed with the Oregon pass coverage so far. Corners and safeties doing an outstanding job and enough pressure to make Browning uncomfortable. Miles Gaston, lots of running room. And he gets wrestled down by Troy Dye. You know, how often, I'm going to say how often, probably never, but the, the fact that in this game and with Washington, we have the all time leading passer at a school and the all time leading rusher. I don't remember unbelievable. having done a game where that has happened. Third down and three. This time they don't come after Browning. They manage to force him from the pocket with fewer men coming after him. And he showed his running skill with just enough to get the first down. And this is what he did last week. He carried it 13 times for 50 yards. Five times on third down, he advanced it for a first down. Doesn't look like much running, but those are good, tough yards. He knew what he needed to get another set of downs. And that's just smart vertical running by the quarterback. Miles Gaskin, a loss of two, and he's wrestled down by Troy Dye across the boundary. By the time they took him to the ground, he was well That out is of the bounds. end of the first quarter. The crowd doesn't like it. Coach Cristobal doesn't like it. End of the first quarter, tied at 10, just a 15-second break right here. So now it is the second quarter. Second and 12 for Jake Browning and Washington. And into the bag of tricks. Go the Huskies. They flipped it back to Browning, and he's on target. That was well covered, but Browning's throw a beauty to Drew Sample for a 33-yard gain. <laughs> well, poor Justin Hollins. Watch number 11. He almost makes three tackles. One, two, three. He misses all three. Brown still able to make a beautiful throw on the run and that's just a linebacker who's not used to covering downfield like that Apelu not used to that kind of coverage and a beautiful throw by Jake Brown Lockman got the penalty yardage back and a couple more to Wildcat and it's Ahmed off the give yeah, from Sean McGrew. McGrew was lined up again. We're seeing a little bit of everything. The traditional play action pass has not been there for Washington in this first half, so they've had to resort to a couple different things to create some plays. Those are Gaskin's shoulder pads on the ground. He's apparently getting some sort of medical attention. He's ordinarily their Wildcat man. It's Sean McGrew in there now. He keeps. He has a first down and first down and goal at the two. Thomas Graham saved a touchdown. Well, they got big Jordan Scott out of the way. He's right here in the middle. Watch him get cleared out. The double team with the center and the guard. They pull the backside guard, Luke Wattenberg. 
and a nice run out of the Wildcat by Sean McGrew. You know, I noticed last week in the UCLA game that Miles Gaskin got up towards the end of the game kind of with some shoulder issues. Not in there right now. Browning back under center. Ackman is the tailback. It's a toss to him, and he uses that speed to give Washington the lead. Drew Sample, number 88, the tight end, come in and get a block. He's going to come right into the screen right here and get the key block to send this thing outside. Just collapses the right side of the defense, and Ahmed able to get to the corner for the end zone for the touchdown. Great view of the second touchdown of the day from the progressive pylon cam. Nice drive by Washington. Peyton Henry, the extra point. And the Huskies lead 17 to 10, 3 12 remaining in the first half on a perfect football afternoon in Eugene. We talked earlier about one of the interesting aspects of this rivalry game. There's the Millen family. They grew up cheering for the Washington Huskies. Kale on the left, play in the middle. Their mom, Michelle, Hugh Millen's wife on the right. Hugh Millen, terrific quarterback at Washington. And their sons, both being recruited by Oregon. Kale, the senior, has already committed. He's having a tremendous senior season. And Clay's a sophomore. He hasn't played yet because his yeah, brother's the right. quarterback. They're familiar with some of the recent history. Back in 2002 and three big wins for Washington, then Oregon reeled off. 12 straight, 10 of them by 17 points or more. And Chris Peterson, when he got to Washington, slowly built it back up. They have annihilated Oregon the last two years. A lot of bad blood on the Oregon side from that appearance here two years ago. The point that we mentioned earlier, Jake Browning pointing at the defense while scoring a touchdown. These current players certainly wanted to make amends for the two losses the last two years on first down, C.J. Verdell ahead for about five. Holly? Well, Miles Gaskin has been taken to the locker room. Interestingly enough, not the Washington locker room, but to the bigger medical facility on the left of the end zone to Oregon's side. He is not ruled out of this game at this point, though. There's an example of the throwing skill of Justin Herbert as he threw a bullet to Dylan Mitchell. Tevis Bartlett delivered the hit. That's the first the Rolling on the field was a fumble forward out of bounds. It'll be coming back to the out of bounds fumble spot. It's just the second big play. A pass of 20 yards or more or a run of 12 yards or more for this explosive Oregon offense. Showing a lot of respect for that talented secondary. They really haven't taken many shots down the field. That might have loosened up the defense a little bit. The Long pass to set up the quick pop by C.J. Verdell, and he got nine more. So far, Oregon has run 12 first down plays, and 11 of them have been runs. They have not thrown the football except one time on first down. That's a man many believe is the top NFL quarterback prospect. In the country, C.J. Verdell got enough for the first down. Another tackle by Tevis Bartlett. This could be a good opportunity for it right now. Again, they're leaning on that big offensive line, a physical group. They're under two minutes. You're in Washington territory. Might be a time now to try to strike down the field. Out of the pistol with three receivers. Steady diet of Verdell. He got about two. Each team with two timeouts left. Then for Kervin. Another tackle for Washington. On second and eight, a minute and 20 to go in the half. Herbert to the end zone. Batted away by Byron Murphy. He was looking for Dylan Mitchell. 
And right. that ball dropped there in a hurry. He was looking left, first of all. He's reading the left side of formation. Mitchell is a backside receiver. And he goes to him late and tries to give him a chance. But a really nice recovery by Byron Murphy to get his hand on the football. It was a late read by Herbert and an outstanding play by Byron Murphy. Out of the pistol on third down and eight. Wow, interesting call. They go to the run on third and eight. And very nearly got the first down. They got seven. So it's fourth and about a yard. Ben Berkirvin in on his seventh tackle of the half. He's also broken up the pass. Mario was thinking two down territory the whole way. Fourth down and one. On the ground, Verdell trying to spin for the line to make. Well, if he got it, it was going to be on second effort because Ben Burkirvin, who has made so many plays this year, he reads and reacts so quickly, and he's in the backfield to make the tackle. And that is not a good sign for Oregon. That is their outstanding freshman, Panay Sewell, the left tackle. So they help Sewell off their veteran right tackle, Calvin Throckmorton, it appears, is going to move to left tackle. He has. Brady Aiello has come in. And right tackle. Jacob Capper has been playing right guard in the absence of Warmack, so a patchwork offensive line. Short pass. Jalen Red, slot receiver, dragged out of bounds by Miles Bryant. 34 seconds to go in the half. One timeout for each team. We talk a lot about Taylor Rapp. Miles Bryant's had an outstanding season so far for this Washington defense. Also plays the nickel position, a very important part of this Jimmy Lake defense. He's lined up in the slot right now over Jalen Red. Tenth play of the Oregon drive. Hoping for the time touchdown. They get the first down. They get out of bounds to stop the clock. Kato Dillon, the catch at the 12th. Two receivers to each side. Good protection to throw too high. Over the head of Dylan Mitchell. Byron Murphy in coverage. Jimmy Lake, the defensive coordinator, said Murphy's been playing at a very high level, and that's been true again in this first half today. Just six for 15 for 81 yards and a touchdown. Gave it off to Verdell. Well, they'll have to use that timeout. That running play meant if it didn't timeout. pop into the end zone or at Oregon. least get a first down the inside the two, timeout, they were going to have to use the last timeout. So have to have the field goal team ready as well if that's what you're going to do because you can't clock it. It'll be fourth down. You don't get a first down. Herbert running out of time. He throws a ball. Was he in bounds? No sign yet. Touchdown, at least for the moment, for Jalen Red. Rolling on the field was a completed pass for a touchdown. Well, we told you this guy can make special throws. We've waited the whole first half to really see one. This is a special throw. Rolling, throwing on the move, and a right to the corner of the end zone. Does he maintain control with one foot in? I think so. Well, the foot's in. Beautiful There's some work. space between those toes and the boundary. They're going to make sure he completed the catch. And the extra point good by Adam Stack. Jalen Red, sophomore from Rancho Cucamonga, California, with his fourth touchdown catch of the year. He had two in their opening win over Bowling Green here. And they'll be even going to the half. Todd said Oregon will get the second half kickoff. Stay tuned for the halftime report coming up after this message and a word from our ABC station. You're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN from sold out Autzen Stadium in Eugene, Oregon. Glorious sunshiny day. 17 apiece as we get ready to start the second half. Sean McDonough and Todd Blackledge. I think, Todd, the big surprise to me in that first half, Oregon 
pretty conservative yeah. on offense. Didn't really seem to be uh, interested in taking advantage of the big arm of their quarterback. Yeah, and they've made a living all year on big explosive plays, big pass plays. Only two in that first half. Pass plays of 20 yards or more. We're kind of content to try to run the football on first down. I think they'll come out this second half and throw more on first downs. This is an offense that was used to averaging over 500 yards a game. Short kickoff by Peyton Henry. Jalen Red runs out of bounds. Just shy of the 30. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, guys, good news if you're a Washington fan. It looks like their all-time leading rusher, Miles Gaskin, is going to be able to return to this game. He just came out of the locker room with his shoulder pads on. He went to the sideline and was talking to some guys, and they made him prove that his shoulder and arm strength was okay. But a football in it, they tried to swat it away, and he was able to hold on to that football. When I asked Coach Peterson if he knew about his status, he says, I don't know what his status is, but from what I've observed here on the sideline, it looks like he will return. That is good news for Washington, although they've got depth at that position. But he's the guy in a game like this that you want to be able to handle the football. And the future is bright at running back with the freshman duo Verdell and Dye. Dye again. They both rushed for more than 100 in that win against Cal two weeks ago, and that's a great sight for everybody, particularly Duck fans, the talented freshman left tackle back on the field, and a Sewell. They got a nice block on that particular play, so piecing that back together, still a different right guard, so that means Throckmorton back to his normal right tackle position. Dye stopped two yards short of the first down. You know, my dad was an offensive line coach for 40 years. Alex Mirabal, the offensive line coach, doesn't look like your normal offensive line coach. He's about 5'10". He used to weigh well over 200. He was Mario's best friend in high school. They both played on the offensive line together at Christopher Columbus High School. Now he's a big runner. So he doesn't look like what you would expect an offensive line coach no. to look like. Most of them look like offensive linemen. Certainly... Coach Mirabal no longer does. He's happy that they block well enough to get Travis Dye the first down. They became friends in high school. Coach Cristobal told us we used to work out. Alex needed a ride home, started to give me a ride home, and now they are so close that Coach Cristobal was the best man at Alex's wedding. He said Alex would have been in mine, but my brother Lewis would have killed me. <laughs> Lewis Cristobal, nearly 30 years a police officer in their native South Florida. Herbert on the keeper, no gain. Herbert taken down by Tevis Bartlett. By Tevis Bartlett. But he's a terrific Something offensive line yeah. coach, and when you add the fact that that's Cristobal's background, last four years prior to coming to Oregon, a year ago at Alabama, the O-line coach from some great teams, obviously. You know, and he said that Alex is the only guy he would trust 100% to coach offensive line technique and play the way he would. Herbert, short throw. Breland, the tight end, Jacob Breland, battling for everything he can get. JoJo McIntosh wouldn't let him get away. Well, in the middle of your picture in the back row, there's the great John Elway, one of the great quarterbacks of all time, now president of football operations for the Denver Broncos. And I think he's probably a little disappointed. There are yeah. 10 NFL teams represented here today. He hasn't really had a, much of a chance to get a look at Herbert. Of course, they took Paxton Lynch. That didn't work out. And an ongoing saga in Denver trying to find the quarterback. Brought in Case Keenum this season. Nice throw by Herbert to Jacob Breland for a first down. And they're out near midfield. Really nice job by the freshman Travis Dye. Watch, see his eyes. He sees a corner blitz coming off the outside. And his ability to pick up the blitz is going to allow Herbert to stay in the pocket, throw the ball on timing with accuracy for the first down. Nice job by the freshman Dye. minutes to go third quarter Washington and Oregon tied at 17 Herbert a strike flag down catch made 30 yard line Dylan Mitchell flag thrown to the middle of the field I think the flag was a hold on Mitchell Mitchell was running an inside and then out route and I think he got held but was still able to break free and make the catch part of the pass 
holding on an eligible receiver. Defense number nine. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. Take a look at the route now. This is Mitchell right here in the slot. As he runs inside, he's going to get held right there. He gets away from it and is still able to make the catch. Again, Herbert, that's where he's looking first and foremost with the football. They announced number nine, but it was five miles. Bryant who grabbed a hold of him. Travis Dye, who is the younger brother of Troy Dye, Oregon's leading tackler. He got three. Brought down by Ralph and Clark. Nice drive going right yeah, here now by the Oregon offense. Seven. They're not running tempo again. That, you know, when Chip Kelly was here, a big part of what they were was just going as fast as they possibly could. They still have fast players, but they don't play with the same kind of tempo. Nifty ball fake by Herbert. Lobbed it off to Ryan Bay. Ben Bercurver in the tackle, Holly. Well, guys, there's a new corner in the game for Washington. Jordan Miller, their senior, is out right now in his place. Keith Trailer, a sophomore. He's very big, though. Long corner, 6'2", 200 pounds, but not as experienced as Jordan Miller. We'll see if that's an impact. Number 27 in white. Sophomore in Long Beach, California. He can really run in a sub-10.9 hundred meters in high school. Interesting formation right now. You got three receivers down here. They're checking at the line of scrimmage. Washington showing kind of a three on three defensive look right now. Play clock at two. They snap it to Herbert. Pulls it down. Not across the line of scrimmage. Throws. Caught. Where's the mark? Looks like short of the first down by about a half yard. Dylan Mitchell with Byron Murphy there. Just short. Fourth and less than a yard. No movement from the field goal team. They're going to go for it. They have a 6 6 quarterback, but they're in the pistol. Die bounced it outside. First down and much more to the 12 yard line. Nice job. We talk about the new right guard. Watch the new guy in here get the key block on the linebacker. And that opens things up. Travis Dye with a good read, good vision to bounce that out and get the first down. Jacob Capra thrust in there with the injury to Warmack. Jacob's brother Johnny on the O-line at Utah. They had a nice home win last night. They stick with Dye. He's down to the seven. Another tackle by Ben Burkirvin. Her curving in on just about every tackle. Yeah. Senior from Menlo Park, California. Coming into the game, he had 74 tackles. That's only 10 less than he had the whole year. Die lunging for the end zone. Didn't get there, but he did get the first down. First and goal at the one. Well, we saw Washington fool the Oregon defense with a quick huddle and a quick snap. That time, Oregon went with some tempo and caught the Washington defense unaware. Justin Herbert trying to get him going again here quickly. First and goal from the one. Oregon trying to recapture the lead. They put Verdell back in. Touchdown! You've got three offensive linemen that have started for 31 straight games, but when you want to run for the touchdown, run behind the new guy, the freshman left tackle. That's where they took the football, and Burdell was able to get that ball across the plane for a go-ahead score. That was a physical... Adam Stack makes it a seven-point lead with just under six minutes to go in the third quarter. Back in Eugene, big crowd here, 58,691. The stadium capacity is 54,000. 4,691 above stadium capacity. The 93rd 
time in the history of this stadium they've gone over 54,000 so they do that with regularity Zach Emerson's kickoff four and a half to go and this critical battle in the Pac-12 take lead the north co-inhabitants of the north Ahmed swung down again by Troy Dye gained to the 39 a pickup of about two one thing you're seeing out of Oregon too is the last time they were in this kind of a situation they really let down in the second half against Stanford they had a 17 point lead they let down this is a much more focused team a more mature team than they were in that game three weeks ago yeah, crushing defeat yeah. they as Mario Cristobal said you really can't have a more devastating loss than that one all day against the three-man rush but Browning couldn't find anybody open he's across the line of scrimmage for a couple of yards taken down by Jalen Jelks who was one of those players who said he was disrespected by Browning's point two years ago it's just outstanding coverage it's so They've got everybody locked up, and there's nowhere for Jake Browning to go with, with the football. They're not blitzing, but he's not able to throw anywhere on time to open receivers. Well, he converted third and five. This one a little tougher. Third down and six. Three minutes to go in the third quarter. Huskies from their own 41 down by a touchdown. Again, lots of time. Man open, first down, Kate Otten into duck territory. He lowered his head and got to the 43, where he's met by Nick Pickett and Troy Don. Otten does a great job. He's going to find a little soft spot right in here. He's going to be coming from the left of your screen. The early tight end sample is going to keep crossing. Oregon. And then Otten's going to sit right in the middle of the formation, show his numbers to the quarterback, and Jake Browning able to hit him for the first down. Nike's design and execution by those two tight ends running the crossing routes. 16 yard game. Second catch of the day for Rotten. Again time now running out of time. Browning throws on the run deep throw and a touchdown. Ty Jones the catch. And Jake Browning says, people want to question my arm strength. How about that throw? Moving to the right, throwing back to the left. Unbelievable throw. Watch him leave the pocket, but not leave his eyes from downfield. He gets help to get him out of the pocket. And then the big receiver, he bodies up the smaller cornerback. He just shields him away from the football and is able to make the catch. Excellent job by Ty Jones. Making that catch, using that big body on the throw from Brown. Now they need the extra point from Peyton Henry to tie it up with two and a half to go in the third. It's 24 all. Boy, what a drive by Jake Brown. He converts the third down on a throw across his body, and then this one deep down the field. Watch Ty Jones, 6'4". He turns his man around, then he just has him. Thomas Graham, he has him behind him. Thomas Graham has no idea where the ball is because he's just trying to scramble to get back into coverage. And Jake Browning hits him for the touchdown. The breeze has picked up. You would expect that this kickoff would be returnable. Peyton Henry picks off. And pops it up in the air to the near side. And Oregon's going to have excellent field position. But again, Panay Sewell is not back in the ballgame. So that means Brock Morton is back over at the left tackle spot instead of right. There's Sewell on the sideline. So a different left tackle, different right guard. The good news is he is on the sideline. Doesn't appear to be in considerable pain. And you would think if it was a serious leg injury, yeah. for example, Todd, he wouldn't be on his feet. Right. Travis died the ball carrier again for a gain of one. Well, guys, it's his right ankle. You can see he came out of the halftime locker room with a heavily taped right ankle. Just got banged up a little more on that play. He's had a rough day. He's got blood all over the front of his uniform. He's uh, had a tough day out there for the young man, but he's over here on his feet. Uh, the right ankle injury came when the body got rolled up on. He couldn't get that right foot out from the pile. Tried to go on it, and obviously not feeling 100%. Well, 
It has lived up to the reputation of this rivalry. Very physical, emotional, and really setting up perhaps as a classic in this rivalry that dates back to 1900. The 111th meeting. Dylan Mitchell to catch. He got them within two of another first down. For Mitchell, that's his seventh catch, and he's over 100 yards again. 103 yards, so in Pac-12 games, this guy has been money for Justin Herbert. Third, a long one. Nice play. Good call by Marcus Arroyo. Well executed by the Oregon offense. Herbert got it to Ryan Bay to the Washington 38 in the first down. Here they go with a little bit of tempo. Get that first down. Nice little design with Ryan Bay. Justin Herbert checks it down. Travis Dye wrestled down by Ben Burkirvin. You heard that before. 31-yard line. It'll be the last play of the quarter. They were tied at 17 and a half. Washington and Oregon tied at 24 at the end of three quarters. Stay tuned for more great action from Eugene after this message and a word from our ABC station. Two teams eyeing a Pac-12 championship, perhaps a berth in the four-team college football playoff to determine the national champion at the end of the year. Second and nine. And freshmen die again. Interesting, interestingly enough, for some teams. And some of those old Oregon teams under Chip Kelly, time of possession didn't mean much of anything. For Washington, the only game they've lost time of possession this year was that opener against Auburn. Every other game, they've controlled the time of possession. Right now, a little bit behind that number with this Oregon team. Chris Peterson and Washington beat their rivals, the Ducks, by a total of 108 to 24 over the last two years. And Herbert's pass intended for Jacob Breel in the tight end off target. Yeah. So it'll be a field goal try to retake the lead for the Oregon Ducks. Off target because he was off balance. And he was off balance because Washington brought a little pressure. I think he could have held in there and maybe stepped into that throw a little bit better than he thought he could. I think he got rid of that a little bit faster than he needed to, and he was inaccurate with the throw. 42-yard field goal for Adam Stack. He made a 39-yarder earlier, just the second made field goal by Oregon this year. And that's, no pun intended, a duck. Snap hook low and to the left. So a nice drive for Oregon yields no points. And the Huskies and Ducks still tied. Washington and Oregon tied at 24. 13-19 to go here in Eugene, Oregon. Jake Browning looking for career win number 35. The starting quarterback in Washington. Oh dangerous throw. It wound up in the hands of Sean McGrew. And look at him go all the way into Oregon territory. It's a screen that he has to loft, and Justin Hollins, number 11, almost intercepts it. Watch, he has to put touch over to get it over the lineman's head, oh and that is so dangerous. Justin Hollins could have had an interception. Instead, Washington gets a big play. Miles Gaskin in. Ahmed injured prior to the break and it was a strange injury time just yep. looked like Ahmed out in space bouncing around with nobody around him turned his own ankle and I'll tell you what Miles Gaskin doesn't look 100% with his right arm either here he is over here on the left and there's no one around him he's just kind of bouncing you can see that his right knee kind of hyperextended on that bounce with Sean McGrew in a running back Sophomore from the Los Angeles area. Had a great high school career. Rushed from almost 5,800 yards in high school and nine yards per carry. 
And Bush Hamden said one of the strengths of our team is our depth of our running back position. You can see, I don't think Miles Gaskin's right arm or shoulder is 100%. Obviously, Ahmed was helped off the field. But they've got Kamari Pleasant and the guy who's in there right now, Sean McGrew, as backups that they might have to lean on here in the fourth quarter of this football game. Here's a big third down and three. They're in field goal range with the win, but their field goal situation hasn't been rock solid either. They line up Gaskin as a wildcat. McGrew passed in front of him. Gaskin on third and three. Extends the ball dangerously. It comes out. They've blown the play dead. A yard short of the line to make. And now Chris Peterson with a decision to make. It would be about a 43-yard field goal from here. Rolling on the field that the runner was down. So dangerous reaching that ball out for extra yardage. Of course, that was the play that ended their their chance to seal the Stanford game a couple weeks ago with Oregon. Fourth down, I think out of the range of the field goal. Yeah. Well, I think they're in range, but it's been an iffy proposition kicking yeah. field goals. Well, I think you want the ball in your quarterback's hands here, Jake Browning. This is his 45th career start. The play clock is already down to 12. Okay, they go with the quick huddle again. Yeah, they started the line, stopped, they quick huddle, they lose the ball. They might have fooled themselves. So here's the deal. Jordan Scott anticipated quarterback sneak. I think quarterback sneak for Washington has been outstanding. They get great push, but watch Jordan Scott anticipate and beat the snap count. He's going to be off the ball before the center makes a clean snap. It doesn't get handled, and because he read the play and anticipated, he blew that play up, and Washington has stopped on fourth down. Their quarterback sneak play has been so effective because they get a great push with the wedge. Jordan Scott knew it, read it, and stuffed it. Herbert steps up. Pulls it down, takes off, running, runs out of bounds at the 46 with a gain of five. JoJo McIntosh, the safety, chased him to the sideline. Mr. Elway has to be impressed by some of these yeah. rockets that Herbert has unleashed. Got his arm in a sling. I asked him what happened. He said he wrecked his bike and he had to get rotator cuff surgery. He thought he was doing the safest kind of workouts he could. And it, Turned out not to be so. No well, golf for a while for the avid golfer John Elway. CJ Verdell, the ball carrier to the 48. Big third down and three as we approach eight minutes to go in a tie game with major implications within the Pac 12 and on the national championship picture as well. Coming into the game, Oregon, best in the Pac 12 at third down conversions, over 50%. On third and three, they elect to throw, and Herbert oh, got ball demolished. Ball. That might be targeting. Unintentional as they spun him around in one direction, but Jalen Johnson came right into him up high to try to finish off the sack. It could have been a face mask called right there that, that did not get called. Here's the personal foul and targeting. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Targeting number 92 is disqualified for the remainder of the game. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And that's big for a lot of reasons, including that they don't have a lot of depth in that front three. They're without Shane Bowman, who was a fixture in the front three. He broke his foot earlier in the year. They hope to get him back for perhaps the last couple of games. Now they lose a guy who's been playing very good, Jalen Johnson. They don't have a lot of depth. And it extends the drive. It was third down. They had him stopped. That's huge in a variety of ways. Yep. C.J. Verdell had the very costly late fumble. Herbert faked to him. Did not fool Taylor Rapp. A 
Todd has mentioned several times, listed as a safety, but he plays all over and very comfortable up around the line to stop the run. Yeah, he was lined up as like a strong safety would be coming on the, the rush for the negative yardage play, a big play on, on first down. Six minutes to go. And Mitchell is the go-to guy. He's up here at the top. No safety help over the top right now. And Herbert looks in that direction. Flush from the pocket and sacked. Back at the 35. Tevis Bartlett, the senior from Cheyenne, Wyoming. Great athlete with the sack. Bartlett does a nice job of maintaining leverage. Here he is right here, 17. Watch him maintain outside leverage. He doesn't let the quarterback get outside, and then he's still able to fall in and make the tackle. Really good discipline by Barton. He knows how to take you down. He won 106 <laughs> wrestling matches in a row in high school, four times the state champ. Third and 19, probably not in field goal range, and that throw is low and incomplete. Intended for Mitchell again, Byron Murphy right there, renewing their day-long rivalry. I think you have to punt the football here now if you're Mario Cristobal because of the loss of yardage plays fourth and 19 is that's a difficult ask for an offense against a team like Washington even though you're in their territory you got to punt it and hope that your defense can pin them down there and, and play field position here with five minutes left in the football game. There's Tom Snee the punt this time Aaron Fuller standing back at his own six yard line. He does kick it. They make a fair catch. Does Aaron Fuller near the seven yard line, 30 yard punt? Washington from deep in its own territory, the eight. Sean McGrew took a long time, but he made it to the 15 yard line. Here's today's player spotlight brought to you by Wrangler. Jake Browning's performance. Slow start in the first half for Jake Browning. He's picked it up, and he's going to have to find a way to finish the deal here. But, I mean, you've got him and Miles Gaskin, two of the most prolific players in Washington history, with the game on the line here for the Huskies. 43 of those yards passing in the second half on the touchdown play. Beautiful play by Browning to Ty Jones to tie the game. And they're still tied at 24. McGrew carried for a first down. Stopped by Jalen Jenks at the 22. Holly told us during the break when we were in commercial that Savon Ahmed does not appear to be able to come back in the game with that right knee injury. And so we're going to see a steady diet of Gaskins and McGrew. And now, Kamari Pleasant also. The depth at running back. A story here for the Huskies. They fake it to Pleasant. Deep throw by Browning. And the catch made by Drew Sample. The linebacker, Apelu, had the coverage. Lana Apelu, but he could not stop the big completion. Well, this has happened twice. Apelu not used to covering down the field like that. Has no idea where the ball is. He's trying to read the eyes of the tight end Sample. But a beautiful throw by Jake Browning. And that's a good matchup that favors the Husky offense. 22-yard gain. Like Sample might have given Appello a little nudge as the ball was arriving. Just shy of midfield. Pleasant. Ripped down. Yes. An aggressive tackle. Austin Folliou. The play for Oregon. Okay, so this tells me right now that Miles Gaskin is not 100% because he's not on the field right now. They're alternating between Pleasant and McGrew for their third and fourth straight running back. So, so your main guy is not 100%. That's why he's not on the field right now at the critical time of the ball game. Under three minutes to go. They bring pressure on Browning. He ducks away from it. Throws on the run. Diving catch made at the 39-yard line of Oregon. Andre Bacella makes his presence felt. They mark it at the 40. First down. First of all, McGrew does a nice job picking up the blitz from the outside. And then Browning does the rest. When he scrambles, he never loses sight down the field. And that enables him to pick up 
Fuller, or Bacelli, for the first down. Bacelli's first catch of the day. Good for 14 yards. Pleasant rips through a hole on the right side. 33-yard line. Jordan Scott going down on the field at the end of the play. Looks like he could be cramping up. He's had a very active game in the middle of that defense. Browning has completed his last seven and nine of his last ten. He's been outstanding. He could not get away, and that's a big loss. Isaac Slade, Mata Utia made the tackle. Excellent play by Mata Utia. Browning looked like he might be able to get free for the first down. Instead, it brings up third down and seven. Peyton Henry's long kick in high school was 52. That's about where it would be from here, maybe 53. As long as a college kicker in his first season this year is 41. That came earlier today. Third down, seven. Lots of time. Has his man. Does not have the first down. Aaron Fuller driven back. And one of the teams is using a timeout. I think it was Oregon that called timeout. I saw Mario Cristobal out onto the field. I think he feels like if they kick a field goal here, Oregon to take the lead, or Washington to take timeout. the lead, Oregon, Oregon would need some time. The first of the half, 30 seconds in length. Clock operator, please put the game clock to 112. I think that's a good decision on his part. Now, they yeah. may not try the field goal. But Washington has enough time either way, Todd, with the three Thank timeouts you. in this field position to score, whether it's a touchdown or a field goal. The lack of time is more likely to be a problem for Oregon in this situation. One of the plays of the season for these two teams. Fourth and three with a minute 12 to go in a tie game. Jordan Scott back in there. Browning got it off. McGrew looks like he has the first down. He does. Big time throw by a big time quarterback. Jake Browning delivers it on time. This is a long throw. He's on the right hash, throwing to the left sideline. Throws it on time to McGrew. And they get the first down. Big time play. Yep. Good tackle by Slade. Mata Utia, but too late to prevent the first down. Sean McGrew started left. Nice run. Now they're in range where it'd be about a 38-yard field goal. Thomas Graham, the tackle at the 21. Boy, just nice piece of running by McGrew. Good vision at the line of scrimmage. Waits till he sees a crease and then goes north and south and gets him in great Timeout. field position. Washington, their second. Washington and Oregon, great rivalry game. And this one is a classic. Tight throughout. Each team is led. They're tied at 24. Washington on a drive, led by the great quarterback, Jake Browning. They're in field goal range, certainly, in the final minute, but with a shaky field goal kicking situation. Sean McGrew lined them up in the middle of the field. There's Peyton Henry, redshirt freshman from Danville, California. Ooh. They're going to run one more play here, Sean. Yeah. It looks like. Take the clock all the way down. Or at least, at least they're changing personnel. They may not run a play. Yeah, they could use the timeout. They let the, uh, well, the play clock. Well, Chris Peterson is right by the official on the sideline. Calls timeout as the play clock goes down. The play timeout clock Washington. on our screen. The second of the half, 30 seconds in length was not operating so it's three seconds and it's going to come down to the foot of Peyton Henry but the game's on the line right now with Washington and a chance to win AJ Cardi second year is the long snapper the punter race Porter is the holder Peyton Henry to win it and he hooked it no good One for three, Sean. The one that counted barely outside that right upright. 
And Mario Cristobal's Oregon Ducks team gets to go to overtime again. And that feels like a loss for Washington and a win for Oregon in that moment right there. Not a tie, well, a loss for one. Coach Cristobal felt like they gave one away and they really did against Stanford. They were given a gift by Washington here on the miss by Henry. So we'll go to overtime. And why not? It's been fun from the start. Yes. The atmosphere is as good as you could have with an overflow crowd in one of the great venues in college football. It's a beautiful day. It's a rivalry game with a lot of meaning. Tell you, the guy that's been a weapon is Sample, the tight end, number 88. They start on the run. Kamari Pleasant, Kamari Pleasant. Wow. Up and over and down inside the 10 yard line. They'll mark him at the six, Javon Holland. Sent him up in the air. We talked about Sample. Watch him on the block here. Great patience by Pleasant. Look at the block by 88. The block by the big receiver down the field, Ty Jones. And first play of overtime inside the 10. So each team will get a possession. The reason Oregon went on defense, they wanted to see what Washington did. Then they know what they need to do when they get a crack at it. From the six, first and goal. Pleasant. Well, how about the backup running backs that we've seen? We knew we were going to see all four of them today, but now because Gaskin and Ahmed both are out with injuries, Pleasant and McGrew have been the guys. Ahmed is on the field now. Okay. Now remember, when they've had both backs in, they've used that action where they fake the, the orbit sweep and either give it to McGrew or give it to Ahmed. They've got three tailbacks in. Here comes Browning as the quarterback, and McGrew is the wildcat. McGrew faked it to Ahmed. McGrew blasted at the line of scrimmage. They weren't fooled in the middle of that defense. Falia again, Austin Falia, the veteran. Good discipline by the Oregon defense that time. Three tailbacks in the game for Washington. Their trick plays have been pretty good today. That time it didn't work. So Browning's back out there. Again, keep an eye on these two tight ends. Big targets in the red zone. Tamari Pleasant on the left hip of Browning. A fade for Jones. Incomplete. He wanted a holding call. Diamador Lenore. And the coverage. I think the ball was thrown too far to draw any kind of a penalty. You've got your big receiver going against Lenore, but the ball is thrown so far away that you can't call anything. There was contact, but the ball was not in a place that the, he even had a chance to make a play. So here's Henry again to give them the lead. 21-yard field goal. It's essentially an extra point. He hasn't missed one of those this year. That one is good, but they had first and goal from the six. So a disappointing result, you'd have to think, yes. for Washington there, thinking about seven and forcing Oregon to get seven. Now a touchdown wins the game for the Ducks. Good snap, good hold, good kick that time. And it was really the trick play when they tried to go to the Wildcat and, and not let Jake Browning have the ball in his hands. That play really hurt him and forced the third down in completion. Now bear in mind the kicking situation across the field from Chris Peterson unsettled as well. Adam Stack's been bothered by a hip. He had an ugly looking kick that would have given them the lead. Late in the game. Here's C.J. Verdell. Good gain on first down. He got to the 18-yard line, a gain of seven. Well, in the game that they lost to Stanford in overtime, Stanford went first and scored a touchdown, and Oregon threw an interception on their overtime possession. Washington scored a field goal first here. A little different situation for the Ducks. A touchdown would give Mario Cristobal his biggest win as Ducks head coach. Washington defense rises up. Tevis Bartlett 
Stops Verdell short of the first down by about a yard and a half. Verdell carries. Stack warming up. While he was injured, Zach Emerson did try one field goal this season, but he had it blocked. Herbert in the pocket, throws, caught, first down. Dylan Mitchell spins inside the 10-yard line. Did a great job working on Miles Bryant. Miles Bryant is covering him. It's to the top of the screen. Herbert's looking at Mitchell the whole way. He gets separation from Miles Bryant, and Herbert puts the ball right on him. Here's the route. Watch him turn him around, get separation. Mitchell's having a tremendous junior season, 17 yards on third and 11. First and goal from the nine, a touchdown wins it. A field goal would send us to a second overtime. Verdell. Ooh, ooh. That was to break free, and it has to also make sure well, you know, that he hangs on to the football. Yeah, because yeah, that's what cost him against Stanford. Burke Irvin with another sure tackle. He's got to be in double digits again in this ball game. Remember, Justin Herbert can run the football, too. He pulls it away from the runner. He surveys the scene. He's running out of time. He throws! Incomplete in the back of the end zone for Dylan Mitchell. And that's one where Justin Herbert is saying, look, I'm going to throw this thing high. I'm going to give you a chance. If you don't get it, it's going to be a safe throw away, and we'll play third down. The Oregon defense rose up after first and goal for Washington from the six. Can Washington's defense do the same, led by Ben Burkirvan, who has 19 tackles today? I tell you, if I'm Washington, I'm rolling my coverage to Mitchell. I'm not letting him have single coverage down here on the bottom. Mitchell goes in motion. They hand it off. Straight ahead for a touchdown! C.J. Verdell wins the game! This is beautiful. They call timeout, and in the timeout, they decided to put Mitchell in motion. That's going to affect two defenders that run with him, and then watch the block by the new right guard, Jacob Capra. He had a holding penalty earlier. He goes to the second level, gets a block on the linebacker, and Verdell runs in for the touchdown. Sweet redemption. For the man who had the very costly fumble when they were just running out the clock to beat Stanford, Stanford wound up kicking the field goal to tie it and beat the Ducks in overtime. This time, Verdell's carry wins the game in overtime. Redshirt freshman from Chula Vista, California. In just a couple of weeks, living both ends of the spectrum. One of the great rivalries in college football and a classic today here in Eugene, Oregon. More great action coming up tonight. Don't forget Wisconsin and Michigan, 7.30 on ABC. Now for Holly Road, Todd Blackledge, our great crew, led by Phil Dean and Scott Johnson, Sean McDonough. So long from Eugene.